after these three eruptions, we realize that this is not just one eruption. This is actually the beginning of a new eruption cycle. And that led us to conclude that we will have more eruptions there. So the reality is there is more eruptions coming. We have to accept this. And um, then we had to start thinking about what is the real problems on the Reykjans Peninsula if there is more eruptions. Well, let me run you through that. So this is the site of the 21 and 22 and 23 eruption, and it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. But there's various other things around. There's Keflavik Airport, there's the town of Grindavik, there's Swartz Engi Power Plant, and there's the Blue Lagoon. So let me zoom in a little bit here. This is a map from 21. There you see the volcano, that's the bright orange spot. You see the lava field. And there's the coastal road, there's the town of Grindavik, and the Blue Lagoon and the Swartz Engi power plant. That's the blue little spot there in the red circle in the top left. So the Blue Lagoon is a huge tourist attraction. It's one of the biggest revenue sources for tourists in Iceland. And, um, well, the Keflavik airport is the only really seriously large international airport in Iceland. And this sits on the peninsula as well. So right now, I think the Keflavik airport is not really a danger and the eruptions are comparatively small, so there was no problems with the air traffic. Every now and then you get a bit of a gas cloud, but uh, it's very low, so the airplanes can go around. It's not a big problem. And uh, sometimes you get condensation. So here is actually not an eruption cloud. This is a condensation cloud where water condenses around particles that are emitted or aerosols, meaning larger molecules from the volcano. But if we look at the geological record, and this is a complicated map, we don't need to go into details, but let me show you the pink, the uh, strong pink colors there. Um, that is eruptions from the last eruption cycle, round about the year 1000 AD. And as you can see very quickly, these eruptions reached the south coast as well as the north coast. And they were even going into what's nowadays Reykjavik. So, when if this is anything to go by, we have to be a little concerned. And there was a huge debate because we have this aluminium smelter here. So here's a picture of the aluminium smelter. And the geologist said, well, it's not a good place for an aluminium smelter, but the mayor of that town insisted to have it because it brings a lot of revenue. And the, let me show you, the aluminium smelter sits exactly here, where the lavas of 1000 AD were hitting the coast. And there's still a depression. If there's more eruptions, if the lavas actually spill to the north coast, the aluminium smelter may actually be in the way. So this is big concerns that we have in the Reykjans Peninsula. I should also point out that 70% of Iceland's population lives on the Reykjans Peninsula, mainly in Reykjavik, but uh, this is a bit of a serious issue. And I should then point out Keflavik Airport, on the left-hand map, it's the little red circle there, um, is the only main airport there. The other ones are in Egilstadir and Akureyri, and they are a long, long drive away. If you had to supply Reykjavik with, uh, well, air bridges from these airports, it would be very awkward. So then, well, in summer last year, the eruptions at Fagradalsfjall stopped, and, well, it's not over, unfortunately. The volcano shifted. It shifted towards the west by a few kilometers, and the Sundnukur uh, eruption started. Uh, this is part of the Swartz Engi system, and unfortunately, that now hit infrastructure. It was no longer a happy little tourist eruption. It suddenly became a rather awkward, serious situation. And um, here we had lava intruding into the town of Grindavik, and uh, not many houses, but several houses got destroyed. And the lava barriers were helpful but they couldn't quite stop one of the eruptions because the vent opened inside the barriers and there's nothing you can do about this. So here's the map on the right-hand side. You see the eruptions of Fagradalsfjall, and on the left you see the Sundnukur eruptions. This map is already outdated because the lava field is already bigger. This doesn't take the June 24 eruption into account, which reached the town of uh, Grindavik. So I went to Grindavik just a few weeks ago and uh, that's how it looked. 
uh, how it looks there. There's lava incursions into the town, and some of the houses got destroyed. It's closed off. The town is evacuated, so you need a special permit to go there. And uh, the lava did not go all the way through the town. Uh, it stopped at some kind of place. And if I was the owner of that garden fence there on the right, I would market this. I would say, I have this wonderful new fence that can stop lava. So, um, of course, we all know this is not the case. It was sheer coincidence and luck. This is a video I took uh, just in April this year. And this is just to give you a flavor how magma moves. The weather wasn't better. And now the video lets me down. Here we are. But uh, the situation is now that here on the right hand side map, um, the uh, uh, beige colors and the orange colors, that's the lava field. The lava has now reached Grindavik and the lava berries, that's the thin red lines. Um, they are actually very helpful because they have diverted the lava to go round about the town. These lava barriers, you can see one in the bottom left, basically they are just uh, dams made of earth and there's a whole fleet of uh, caterpillars and trucks uh, doing this. They are on standby all the time and uh, they can close them and open them as they please. They can also fill um, roads over lava again, so within a few days they can actually build a new road over lava. It's quite impressive. But the big reality is that we have quite some problems. In the upper part of the map, let me show you here, here we see lava that has gone around the lava barriers. Here's the Blue Lagoon and here's the Swartz Engi power plant. The Swartz Engi power plant also has a investigation site, a laboratory, where we are trying to fix carbon into the ground, the carb fix laboratory, and uh, all of these installations are at risk. So here is the uh, Blue Lagoon and the Swartz Engi power plant behind. Well, the Blue Lagoon, the water comes from the power plant. It's the leftover waters that are used for the Blue Lagoon. And in the background, you see that road that goes from left to right, passing the Thorbjörn Hill on the uh, top right-hand side. And that road has been covered by lava three times now. So if there's a new eruption, it's estimated that lava will cover this road again. And within about two to three hours, it's likely that that road is cut off again. Now, how will this all continue? I think we will have more eruptions. And here is a timeline, Geldinger Dahlia, Mera Dahlia, Little Rutur, and then Sundnuka. We are waiting for the ninth eruption now, and the speed, the frequency of the eruption seems to increase. So there seems to be more eruptions, and they come in quicker succession. And several people asked me, how do you know that there's another eruption coming? So I downloaded these diagrams this morning. This is from the Icelandic Met Office. It's a little complicated, but let me run you through that. If you have a magma reservoir and it inflates, you can calculate from the inflation how much magma is accumulating. And that's what's drawn up on the left-hand side, magma volume for these two diagrams. And here is the inflation of the last eruptions. So here we had inflation, and the star means eruption. So each of these led to an eruption. The squares means no eruption, the inflation stopped. So the red curve here, this one here, is the current one. The circle means nothing has yet happened. And this is actually from just about a week ago, the data. This curve has now moved up to about here. And this means the inflation is already stronger than we have seen for several of the previous eruptions. And that means the likelihood of an eruption is extremely high. So the Icelandic Met Office on their webpage says they are expecting an eruption within the next seven to ten days. How about Reykjavik? Is Reykjavik safe? Well, here you can see the eruption from Reykjavik. It's only about 40 kilometers away. And this was an important question, and I was asked by 
one of the scientific editors, can you say something about this? And they asked me to write a little article, which we did, and I have a few prints out there. We just published this. And um, here we came up with these three options in the bottom. So uh, we don't quite know how the system looks like, but uh, there could be a deep reservoir, there could be several small ones, and there could be a shallower, big one. If we have this right-hand situation, then Reykjavik might actually have magma sitting underneath it, and um, this could be disconcerting. So we did quite a bit of work, and the good news is that it's the same magma for the two volcanoes. Fagradalsfjall and Svartsengi have the same magma. It's just one volcano, actually. And the other thing is we can do some seismic topogra uh, tom tomography. It's a bit like CT scans, but for the Earth. And there we can see one magma reservoir that sits at about 10 to 12 kilometers depth. And let me show you. Very complicated diagram, I know. But uh, here it is. So this is the main magma reservoir. And it's actually quite limited in size. It's only a few kilometers wide. It sits right under Fagradalsfjall. And here we have a kind of fork. And there is some magma rising up to the Sundnuker cones and to Svartsengi. So right now, it's actually a comparatively small system. So if we go back to this, it's actually this model, model D, that is the most likely one. And that means there is no magma sitting under Reykjavik. So, there is some reason for optimism, um, although, of course, not if you live in Grindavik. So, let me bring this together. Here we have uh, the Reykjans Peninsula, um, and we have now two of these kind of seven volcano systems being active. There is a possibility more could become active, and geologically speaking, we have to get ready for more eruptions. And uh, this is just the reality, but we're learning a lot scientifically, but also practically, and also when it comes to emergency services. So, thank you very much for your attention, and if you have a chance to go there, you should actually get one of the really cool t-shirts they're now producing. Thank you very much. <laughs>